Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts. And today I'm here with AR15.com at the range at Austin to talk to you about our Shoot Faster video series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about site management. So, the idea behind shooting faster is sometimes really simple, but not easy. So it can be simple to just shoot faster, but shooting accurately at high speeds is another question altogether. So one of the things that I really want to emphasize is that these are, these are elements to being able to shoot faster. And site management to me is kind of one of the easier ones to manage because once the shooter understands site management, it allows them to focus on the things that really are going to impact your ability to shoot fast. But part of shooting faster is not just about that first shot that you fire. It's about all the other shots that you want to try to fire and how to be faster when it comes to multiple rounds. So first thing we talk about is not to make any assumptions and not to insult anybody's intelligence, but the sights themselves. We'll do another video on red dot sights, but for now we're gonna be talking about iron sights since they're the most prolific sights you're gonna see. With that being said, this sight system has three moving parts. Technically they're not moving, but you get what I'm saying. The first is gonna be the target itself. The second will be the front sight. And then the third is going to be the rear sight. So all of these exist in a plane that when properly aligned will generate a hit. So of those three objects, it's easy to want to look at the target. The problem is that's not going to help you to align the sights. And when it comes to shooting faster, the caveat is shoot as fast as you can guarantee the hits. So if you shoot fast and miss, you can't shoot faster to make up that hit. I'm sorry, to make up that miss. So with that being said, you're gonna to need to focus on the front sight. And when you can focus intently on the front sight post, that's step one. The next thing that we have to do is that we want to make sure that you understand that you're gonna see the target blurry and the rear sight blurry, and that's okay. Focusing on that front sight is the key to being able to be accurate. Now, we take it a step further. You could just take the front sight, but if you notice that the front sight is most of them are equipped with some type of aiming reference, usually a dot. So that dot exists inside the front sight post and it's normal for you to want to be fixated on the dot. And for combat shooting, absolutely. When we're talking about being precise with our sights, you're gonna to want to look at the very top of the front sight post. Now, if we look at the top of the front sight post to align it with the rear, I want the top of the front to be equal with the top of the rear. And if we can do that, we will then have solved our elevation issue. Next, I need to make sure that the front sight post is equal in the rear notch. And if it is, then we can say that we have corrected for our windage. So now that you understand sights, let's talk about how to use them. So part of site management is understanding site alignment, but then also your site picture. And site picture is nothing more than superimposing correct sight alignment on the target. However, one of the things that we talk about is there, there exists this sight box that's out in front of your face. And the sight box is the home of your sights. That's where your sights need to stay, right? When we talked about grip, we talked about the purpose behind the grip was to hold the gun stable and steady during the shooting. And if you can do that, you'll keep your sights inside the sight box. So why is that important? If you keep your sights in the sight box, it means that your sights are virtually staying on the target. And how do we measure the sight box? Well, usually I just imagine an index card at full extension in front of your sight line. That would be a sight box. So as long as you can keep your sight system inside that sight box, it's typically gonna stay on the target. So the next thing that we talk about is the presentation of your sights. And here's where we really start to get faster, right? Because shooting fast means doing the minimal amount of work as precisely as you can. So if you get rid of all the crap in your technique, you're left with a very efficient technique and therefore you will be faster. Now there comes a point where we actually start hitting the the pedal a little bit harder and we actually start to see ourselves going faster. But this right here is the first step at trying to develop speed, is being efficient. So whenever I'm presenting the gun to target, I'm presenting the sights to the target. And that's the key thing that you need to think about. 
is that I need to drive my sights to the intended point of impact. I'm not just extending the gun out and then moving the sights to the target. I need to move the sights from the point of carry to the point of impact. And if you can do that, then you're probably gonna see less time at trying to align the sights. Now what I recommend is that if you can extend the gun to the target with the sights being roughly aligned more than 50% of the time, that's huge. People don't recognize how valuable that is. And that right there is one of the simplest things at trying to be fast, is if I extend the gun to the target and I don't have to make as much corrections to my sight alignment, I can shoot sooner and therefore I'll be faster. So as we present the sights to the target from the point of carry to the point of impact, if you can work towards making sure that those sights are aligned, you're gonna be a lot better off. Now, how do we go about doing that? And that's where practice comes in. You're gonna to have to practice this a lot, but that's also something that's easy to do. Practicing the extension, your gun mount, to the point where now your sights are coming out, quasi aligned, huge, massive, massive step in the right direction. The next thing we talk about is getting comfortable with things not always having to be perfect. So in the beginning, I want things to be as perfect. In a sense, what I try to get students to do is to execute flawlessly, right? Now, I know that's not really possible, that's asking a lot, but the goal is to try to perform all of our technique with as few errors as possible. What will happen at some point is that in an effort to try to shoot fast, you'll start taking shortcuts. And one of the shortcuts that you might take is not really paying attention to your sights or not really focusing on your sights as much as you should. But the other thing that we talk about is that there becomes this phenomenon where you move the gun to the target and you want the sights to be perfect. But that takes time. And as you're taking the time to make sure those sights are aligned, you try to make up that time by excess of force on the trigger. So you realize that it took you longer to make that perfect sight picture and you try to make up that time by slapping the trigger, putting a little bit too much force on the trigger, you disrupt the sights and you create a miss, right? So we need to acknowledge that's something that happens. At some point, you're gonna have to move past perfect sight alignment and work with good enough, good enough for the shot required. And we talk about that as far as time, distance, and exposure. As you start to become better at shooting, you're gonna recognize that those three, those three kind of characteristics are gonna affect your shot or affect your ability to make the shot. So at some point, when the sight comes out and it settles on the target, once you've developed your sight presentation to be at least rudimentarily aligned, you're not going to have to wait to perfect that sight. You can literally start shooting before that sight is perfect, right? That's the key. We're gonna be using what we call our first best sight picture. Now, I first heard this term from a competitive shooter, J. Michael Plaxico, years ago, and I've used it ever since. As soon as the sights are up there, as long as they're good enough, I'm happy. If my target that I'm shooting has an eight inch target zone and my sight comes out and it's aligned, but it's not perfectly in the center, I don't care. And neither should you. If it's inside the target zone, let her rip. Because if we take the extra time to try to move that sight picture up a little bit, then you're gonna feel that monkey jump on your back and that's gonna produce that excessive force on the trigger. So learn to embrace your first best sight picture. As soon as that sight picture comes out and it's on that point of impact, just go with it. It's extremely liberating when it doesn't have to be perfect anymore. In the beginning, yes, I want it to be as flawless as you can get it, but then you reach a point as you mature as a shooter where that's not necessary anymore, and you don't want it. Because if you really want to start to shoot fast, you're gonna to have to let go of some of that stuff, and the first best sight picture is a great way to do it. What will also start to happen, what I find to be so awesome, is when you can start to track your sights, what's called sight tracking. All right, now I, I reference this 
in our classes as the experience, that euphoric experience of sitting in front of a flickering flame and just watching it go. You're in a campfire and you just stare in that flame and you're just mesmerized by it. Well, believe it or not, your sights can do the same thing. As you get better at this and you stay fixated on your sights, you'll start to watch them lift and move, lift and move, lift and move. But they're staying inside the sight box. So that allows you to actually watch them through their entire movement. And as you're watching them through that entire movement, it is so cool. And as soon as I can get a shooter to start sight tracking, that sets us up for the next thing, which in many cases is referenced as an advanced technique. But honestly, anybody shooting should have this technique, which is calling your shot. When you sight track, because you've got to that point where you can keep everything in that sight box, use that first best sight picture, understand sight alignment, then what happens is you'll see the moment the sight, or I'm sorry, the moment the shot breaks where the sight was. And that's hugely valuable. Because when we talk about being able to shoot fast in a multiple round string, how do I know to shoot fast? How do I know to actually follow up with another shot? And the only way that I'll know that, aside from getting a response from the target, if I'm shooting a, a real target, is where was my sight at the moment of discharge? And if I can see that my sight wasn't in the acceptable sight target zone, then I know to immediately follow up with another shot. And that, again, is one of these things that helps you to shoot faster. You realize, oh, up and right. I saw that I, my sight was in the upper right-hand corner. I knew it. I don't have to wait. I'm immediately getting back on that sight to fo fire that follow-up shot. So when you get to the point where you can start sight tracking, that sets you up for being able to call your shot. And when you can call your shot, you have officially arrived. That, to me, designates somebody that really understands how to shoot fast, that they can call their shot. So now, we've gotten all of that stuff out of the way. Let's talk about some of the common sighting errors that I see. And I've talked a little bit about some of them in an effort to prevent you from making them. But let's talk about what happens when you actually do make these mistakes. So kind of like the, the top three, if you will, are going to be if I'm not looking at my sights. Very normal. It's, it's normal for a new shooter, first time gun owner, to not really understand what looking at their front sight means. And that carries over to what I call ghosting. And what that means is that you're looking at the target, then you look at your front sight, look at the target, front sight, and you just kind of make this like relay race back and forth, back and forth, but you break the shot somewhere in between. So normally, we'll see a shooter that's capable of producing a nice tight group. When they start to look at the target or start to ghost their sights, we'll see their shot group open up. So the only remedy for that is to get them to refocus on the front sight post. The next error that we can typically see is going to be the difference between looking at the top of the front sight and looking at the dot. If you're at close ranges, like 10 yards and in, does it really matter? Theoretically, no. If your target zone is a reasonable size target zone, like eight inches, not really. However, if you want to be precise and hit what you're aiming at, you have to understand that there is a difference between the center of the dot and the top of the front sight. And so what happens is a lot of shots go high because the shooter's looking at the top, or I'm sorry, looking at the dot. We won't see that until we start to extend the distance 10, 15, 20, 25 yards, but then all of a sudden they're hitting high. They can't understand why. Because they're looking at the dot. So the shooter has to know that when precision is called for, I need to be looking precisely at the top of my front sight. Now, the next thing that we talk about is windage issues. Now, windage issues a lot of times are caused because you're imparting force that's not neutral on the gun. And it'll move the gun to the left or move the gun to the right, depending on what gun hands or what hand is holding the gun. But if you are tracking your sights, you'll see those subtle movements. So I'm going to do a demo here real quick, kind of show you what happens when you make these mistakes, what you can look for when you're making those mistakes, 
and then say, huh, I wonder if I'm doing this, all right? So the first one I'm gonna talk about is gonna be not looking at my site. I'm looking at the target and I just see my site kind of like as a blur, all right? So I'm gonna shoot kind of like a baseline where I'm looking at my front site and then I'm gonna shoot one where I'm not looking at my front site. All right, shoot a baseline group here real quick. All right, so baseline group, nice and easy. Now, I'm gonna look at that target, I'm not gonna look at my front sight. So, it didn't open up quite as much as I wanted, but that's only because I'm probably at the five yard line. So I literally was looking past my sights. They were a blur, couldn't really see them. I'm not gonna lie, there was one time when my vision went to the site because it's kinda hard to do the wrong thing and have it kinda stuck in there. But that's another interesting point that when I'm trying to do these errors, sometimes my habits of good technique sneak in and ruin the shot. Thanks, good habit. All right, so next, if I'm looking back and forth, so if I move from the site to the target, back to the site, back to the target, but I fire the shot somewhere in between. So this is what that might look like. So I'm looking at my front side, look at the target front side, 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 target front side. So as I'm ghosting between there, my shots are opening up. I'm not fixated on that top of that front sight anymore. I'm looking down and then back, and what I'm doing is I'm kind of seeing nothing. Kind of not seeing anything. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at the top of the, I'm gonna look at the dot as opposed to the top of my front sight. All right, so looking at the dot as opposed to the top of the front sight will produce a shooting error where So my shot group went high, right? And, and it, it went significantly high at this distance. So now, the last thing is to have a little fun with regards to my windage. So when it comes to shooting errors, when it comes to shooting errors, I like to try to demonstrate to shooters how much of a shooting error will produce a miss. So I'm going to move my sights windage wise so grossly just to show you that when you do that, it's not gonna affect your shot as bad as you think, right? So I'm gonna move the right edge of my front sight post all the way to the left edge of the rear sight, all right? I'm gonna shoot the bottom target so that you can see this on a clean target here. So here I am, I'm aligning All right, so that was really grossly to the left, right? I mean, it's really not that bad. Now I'm gonna do it grossly to the right. All right, so again, that's taking the front sight post and moving it to the far extreme in the notches to where you really can't even see the front sight post. And yet, it's still printing fairly decent on the target at this close range. So what does that tell you? You really have to screw up your sights to generate a miss. Which is why I always try to tell people that, you know, if you can get your sights, you can get them down or get them under your belt, you're gonna be fine. That's gonna allow you to focus on all the other things that are a little bit more challenging. So, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, as well as please engage with us on the comment section so that we can try to keep this video in front of as many viewers as possible. All right, until then, take care and stay safe.